knowing how to find x intercepts is an important skill to be able to graph anything. So x intercepts are some key points. So just a note about x intercepts. X intercepts happen when um, the value of the function is zero. So if we have this function f of x or y equals two to the x squared minus five and then minus sixteen. That means we're, we want to know when the value of this is zero. So we are going to take our equation and set it equal to zero. I'm not incredibly concerned, though, about my pre-calculus class in this situation, understanding this right now. So if this is something you would prefer to skip, that's OK. I might make the x-intercepts part of the assignment uh, the above and beyond the part, which would give you the level four grade. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and move the 16 to the other side so that I have the exponential equal to a number. And notice how 2 and 16 can both be the same base. So I can use the one to one property to solve this. Change this to 2 to the fourth power. That allows me to ignore the twos set the exponents equal to each other. So x squared minus 5 equals 4. And just solve this. So x squared equals 9. Square root both sides. Anytime you throw a square root into a problem like this, you have to consider that there's a positive and a negative answer. OK, so the answers would be positive or negative 3. So since this was finding the x-intercepts, that means we have an x-intercept at 3 comma 0 and an x-intercept at negative 3 comma 0. You maybe you're thinking, well, is it okay for it to actually be a negative 3? Yes, because this is not a logarithm, this is an exponential. Plugging a negative into an exponential is just fine, but you can't do that with a logarithm. All right, let's look at example 6, which is graphing. So we're going to go ahead and find our x and y intercepts and see if we can determine the asymptote. We learned that in a different section, I think that was in 4.1, that we learned about that the asymptote would be at y equals negative 1, correct? And then um, find the x-intercepts the same way we just did the last problem. You can find the y-intercept by plugging in 0. So let's go ahead and do the y-intercept first because it's super easy. So for the y-intercept, we let x equal 0. So that gives us 3 to the 2 times 0 plus 1, which is basically just 3 to the first power, which is 3. So that gives us a point at 0, 3. Then let's find the x-intercept. I'll label this with the asymptote. Okay, so the x-intercept. Um, there could be more than one, or there might just be one. So let's go ahead and figure that out. So we're going to set our equation 3 to the 2x plus 1 minus 1. Set that equal to 0. We'll move the 1 to the other side. Uh, we can take the log of both sides and solve this that way. Or here's a tricky thing we can do that you probably saw in section 4.1. Anytime we have 1, we can change that to any base we want. We could change that to a base of 3, because we already have a base of 3 over here. But we would just do 3 to the 0, because anything to the 0 power is 1. That allows us to use the 1 to 1 property. We now just have 2x plus 1 equals 0, which means 2x equals negative 1. I subtracted the, negative, subtracted the 1 from both sides, and then divide by the 2. So we get negative 1 half. So our x-intercept would be at negative 1 half comma 0. So let's go ahead and plot these points. We've got our asymptote. I'm going to go ahead and do a dotted line for that at negative 1. Not incredibly straight, but you get the idea. Um, our y-intercept was at 0, 3. And our x-intercept is at negative 1 half 0. So using those details, we can go ahead and sketch in our graph.
I just realized that I made a mistake. So here it is. Um, when I did the light intercept, I let x equal 0 and I plugged it in, but then I forgot about the extra negative 1 at the end of that problem right there. Let's go ahead and fix this from what we had. I'm going to get rid of this. So this would be two, 3 to the first power, which is 3, and then subtract 1. So that would be 3 minus 1, which is 2. So our y-intercept is actually at 2. Which is actually a little bit better point that I hit when I was doing the graph anyways. So let me get rid of that purple point right there. So I think you've got the idea. The purple one was the wrong one I did at first. The green one is the correct y-intercept. 